What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Wolves of Investing. My name is Donnie Nguyen and I'm the founder of Wolves of Investing. If you're new to my channel, my channel is primarily about investing in the stock market. If you want to learn how to achieve financial freedom through investing, be sure to click on that subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't yet. In this video, I'm going to be going over my monthly M1 Finance portfolio update for July 2020. In this portfolio, I'm showing you how I'm investing on a budget with just $25 a week. To show you how I'm investing my first $1,000, first $10,000 and beyond in the stock market. And if you're new to investing, be sure to check out wolvesofinvesting.com and download my free ebook after watching this video, of course. So without further ado, Let's get into the portfolio. What's up everyone? So here's my M1 Finance portfolio. The total account balance is $1,476.72. Let's take a look at my holdings. I've got 11 positions. My cost basis is $1,170.61 for a total unrealized gain of 26.15%. And we take a look at my all-time return is 67.92%. And my returns over the last month are 5.65%. And I started this portfolio back in August of 2019. Now let's head on over to the activity. So I've got it set up for automatically depositing $50 into my account every two weeks. And I just set it up for automatic investing. So any money I have in my account is just going to get automatically invested into my portfolio. So you can see here on July 13th, I made seven purchases for $50.46. Nothing crazy, just dollar cost averaging it into my portfolio. And here on June 30th, I did make a major change to my portfolio. If you've been following along, with my videos, you know that I've been kind of on the fence with Xilinx. I've been trying to determine if I should keep investing in Xilinx or sell. And I decided to finally just sell Xilinx and instead purchase Nvidia. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. And I just made another trade on June 29th, seven purchases, nothing fancy. So let's head on over to the portfolio. And here I'm just going to talk about the stocks that I own and my plans for them in the future. All right, so first up is Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat is an awesome company. They make vegan meats. It is a product that I really like and it's a company I really like. Their vision and their values really align well with mine. And the company is just firing on all cylinders. They are executing very well. They've got a great leadership team. They're making deals in China, which opens up a lot of market potential for them. I have a 12% portfolio target on Beyond Meat, and my plan is just to keep it at 12% for now. There's nothing on the horizon that I can think of that would make me want to sell or invest less in Beyond Meat. And 12% a pretty good chunk of my portfolio. So there's also no reason for me to increase that. I usually try to keep my portfolio weights to 10% or less, but I am experimenting a little bit here and boosting it up to 12%, which I feel very comfortable with. All right, so next up is Broadridge Services. They make compliance products for publicly listed companies. They own ProxyVote. And they're not a high growth company or anything like Beyond Meat, but they have a huge economic moat. It's a huge competitive advantage. They have a very monopoly like business model. It's a company I really like, and I plan on just to keep investing in them. It's funny, the other day I was looking at the Pinterest investor relations site. Pinterest is another company that I own in one of my other portfolios. And they use Broadridge 
for some of their webcasts. So I thought that was really cool, really interesting, and just made me a more strong believer in Broadridge. So my plan with them is just to keep investing. I don't see any reason to change my target right now. I actually think I just boosted it up from 8% to 9%. Next up, Floor and Decor Holdings. They're a great company where you can get hardwood floors. Their earnings is going to come out pretty soon. You know, their earnings conference call comes up on July 30th, something I'm going to pay close attention to, you know, with all the social distancing and the economic impact of COVID. It's going to be an interesting earnings conference call. Do I think they're going to get through? I think they're going to get through. I think they're going to get through it and become an even stronger company and take market share away from their competitors. So Florida Coal Holdings, don't plan on making any changes there. Next up is Illumina. I don't plan on making any changes with Illumina. Still think they're a really great company. They also have a huge economic moat in the gene sequencing market. MasterCard's next. Not much I can say there. They're a great payments company. They also have a huge economic moat. Moody's is another company that just has a huge competitive advantage. Nothing really fancy here. I'm just going to keep on investing in them. Now, I did want to talk about NVIDIA, which I just added to the portfolio this past month. NVIDIA is a company that I'm pretty sure most of you know they're a gaming company, but their chips are also used in artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, and multitude of other use cases. Originally, I had owned NVIDIA a few years ago. I purchased them around $90, and I sold most of my shares around the $200 to $250 range. So, so I made some pretty good returns on NVIDIA. And one of the reasons I originally sold in the first place was because NVIDIA, although they are the market leader in artificial intelligence in training, their chips are not, at least at the time, they are not optimized for the other area of artificial intelligence, which is inference. And the chips that do really well at inference are CPUs, such as the ones created by Intel, and FPGAs, which are chips that are made by Xilinx, and also by Altera, which is a subsidiary of Intel. So my thought process at the time was, Hey, you know, NVIDIA, they're great at AI training, but the inference market is going to blow up and they're going to be left behind. So I decided to buy Xilinx. And I've been kind of on the fence with Xilinx. Their last quarter, their last quarter's earnings weren't really that great compared with NVIDIA and Intel, which did really well. So I still think Xilinx is a great company, but I did a little bit more digging and I found out that NVIDIA actually found a way to get into the inference market. So NVIDIA started making CPU chips. They're likely not as high quality as Intel chips, but they're good enough to do artificial intelligence inference. And they were really innovative about it. They approached the artificial intelligence problem more as an economic problem. By adding the CPUs to their chips, their customers can do artificial intelligence training and inference all in one chip. So that's why I decided to go with NVIDIA and sell my Xilinx stock. I didn't have to sell my Xilinx stock. I could have kept both NVIDIA and Xilinx, but I really don't want this portfolio to blow up and have tons of holdings in it. I really want to try to keep my the number of holdings under 15. And if I keep adding more stocks on, Pretty soon, this could become too many holdings. So I really just wanted to make a decision here. And I feel like NVIDIA is the clear winner compared with Xilinx. So I decided to sell my Xilinx and go forward with NVIDIA. Next stock on my list, Paycom. They make human capital management software as a service, HR type software. I really like this company. They're growing pretty steadily. 
COVID, I believe, is definitely going to impact their business. So I'm going to be looking at their earnings conference call, which should be out in a few weeks, I think, maybe by the end of the month. Well, let's check that real quick. Paycom Investor Relations. I think we go to the events. And the upcoming events. Well, it looks like they don't have any events coming up, but they presented their first quarter results on April 28th. So I would expect their second quarter results to come out May, June, July 28th. So sometime around there. So, so I'll definitely be listening in on that conference call and taking a close look at their second quarter results. Amazon. So Amazon is very interesting. Amazon is just one of those stocks. I mean, they're so huge. Their market cap is, what's their market cap right now? It is $1.6 trillion. Now, they're a great company, clearly. And Jeff Bezos, he's just an awesome businessman. But governments are starting to probe them a little bit for their business practices. So if you didn't know, there was a piece in the Wall Street Journal alleging that Amazon is taking their customers data so people who sell products on amazon and using that proprietary data to create their own amazon products and sell it on amazon to compete directly with their own customers so it's a potential risk just something i'm going to keep an eye on so i don't plan on making any changes to amazon in the near future the next stock on my list is the trade desk Wow, I'm up 200% on the trade desk, so pretty cool there. Let me take a look at the holdings because I'm curious how well I'm doing on a cost basis performance. The trade desk, trade desk is right there, up 87%, 87.7% on the trade desk. Wow, that's pretty cool. So trade desk is an awesome company. I've never used their product before. I really wish I did because it's a digital advertising company. And just through some research, if you use their product, I believe it costs about $5,000 a month to use the Trade Desk platform, which is one of the reasons I don't use them. I don't have $5,000 a month to advertise, but pretty cool company. Even though I've never used their products before, I feel like I understand. I feel like I understand them very well. And they're still, let's see, their market cap still only 21 billion. If their digital ads platform is really that good, I could easily see their, their market cap becoming $30 billion someday. So I'm definitely interested in their earnings conference call. They don't have their next earnings on the calendar yet, but their last earnings was on May 7th. So I'd expect their next earnings to be June, July, August 7th, right around there. So I'm definitely going to be interested in their earnings conference call and seeing how they've been impacted by COVID. And the last stock on my list is Republic Services. They're very much like waste management. They collect trash, they collect recycling, and they have a monopoly in any of the regions where they collect trash and recycling. We use Republic Services in my neighborhood, in my city, and I think actually all around my county. People need to get their trash and recycling picked up. And let's take a look. Yep, they also provide a dividend yield of 1.94%. So it's a dividend stock as well. So I don't plan on making any changes to Republic Services in the near future. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.